Blah, y'all really know what it is, your boy Yako, what it do, the outlet to reality, the whole this podcast in Vegas and Chicago, what up? This is the place where you want to hide from your drama or maybe hide from your baby mama. Aha, just kidding. But anyways, fans, thank you for staying tuned. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Cha-ching! And today we have one of the best DJs ever in the West Coast, uh, DJ B. Lou. How you doing, brother? What's going on, man? Thanks for having me. I've been I've been waiting, man. Took you long enough. <laughs> Sorry, bro. You know, I had to get through you like like four uh secretaries just to get to you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they said, I gotta make an appointment. <laughs> oh man. But real quick, man, uh, I want to share a quick story to my fans how I met uh DJ B Lou. Uh, real quick, so I met him at a big showcase, he was performing. And he was bringing me back to the old days. He was playing some cumbia, the ch -ch 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 -ch. and I was like, "Oh, step that, 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 that!" I started dancing, and I was like, "Man, this this is pretty dope, man." I've been looking for a good spot to, you know, dance. And what I noticed is that Chicago is really big in cumbia. It's like eighty percent everywhere, any club you're gonna hear it. But in Vegas, it's not really big. It's like maybe twenty percent people are really big into it. So I was trying to bring it back. But my boy right here, he's like, man, I ain't playing games. Let this play it. And I'm not going to lie. It was a great performance, man. A lot of pretty girls. And at the end of the showcase, I told DJ B. Lou, I said, hey, brother, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Uh, can I ask you a question? You're like, yeah, yeah, what's up? I'm like, hey, are you Mexican? And he's like, nah, bro, I ain't Mexican. <laughs> and, and the reason why I thought, because I'm like, man, you, you really brought me back to my old days. And I, I was feeling the music. And I'm going to be honest. So back in Chicago, I got a lot of, you know, Afro-Latinos that, you know, they're black, but they, they're Mexican or Puerto Rican. And so right away, I, you know, I thought, my, you know, DJ B. Lou, you know, he was, you know, he was Latino. But he's like, nah, bro, I'm not. But he told me one thing I really like. He's like, you know what? I actually have a good appreciation for all different type of music. You know, I know what people like. It, depending on the environment, that's what I'm going to play. And I was like, man, I respect that. That's what's up, man. And, and I knew right there that homie's he's a real DJ, real life. Um, and what about you, brother? What was your first impression that you could remember when we met? Oh, man, just uh, you and your crew, man. Y'all was just tearing up the, the dance floor. <laughs> I, know, I, I didn't know. I didn't think you had moves like that. I'm like, wait, who, who is this dude? And then, and then uh, when, when we chopped it up, I was like, oh, he, he got a little swag to him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I thought, I thought you, you know, I thought, you know, you, I, I didn't expect, you know, what came out of you, but yeah, but, um, but nah, but y'all, you know, I, I definitely just remember the energy that you brought, man. And just one thing I could say about, and, and you know, we've seen each other multiple times, uh, since the first time we met, but, um, you just you just bring bring some you bring that energy with you, man. No matter what. So those listening is this. It isn't just the podcast. He he liked this twenty four seven. So <laughs> <laughs> it's all it's never turned off. Even yeah. I, I seen them ordering tacos turned up with the energy. So so yeah, this what you see is what you get. So I, I just want to put that out there, man, and and definitely keep keep being that way. You know. I appreciate that. I appreciate it, brother. Uh, much love, man. And, and real quick, guys, for the main topic of today, DJ B. Lou, uh, for those who don't know, uh, he moved to Vegas. Um, so real quick, brother, I want to ask you, what is your, like, tell us a little bit about your background, what neighborhood you grew up in, where were you born, and uh, any hobbies you have? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um... As you see, I got the, the Laker jersey on. So born and raised uh, South Central L.A. Uh, my entire life. Um, went away for a bit. I went to college for a bit back back on the East Coast, uh, Virginia. And then uh, then I migrated to Vegas after that. Um, and yeah, just just growing up, always been around music. Um, probably like most DJs or most musicians. Um, I started off as a rapper, man. I, I wanted to rap, you know, middle school. I was just writing, writing, you know, in ciphers in high school. Like that, that was my thing. 
had a few had a few record deals that just fell through, you know, everything from, you know, signing deals and to somebody's garage to, you know, indie deals, you know, it's like, <laughs> so yeah, so, you know, I, I've had a journey as far as the music goes. And then, um, and then once I, then that transition from emceeing to um, doing production. And then once, uh, once I got into production, I just kind of had an easy transition into DJing uh, just because, you know, when you do production, you already know beats per minute, you know, you, you, you just know music, always had a good sense of music just growing up, just hearing different things. Um, not always. I was, I was a very heavy, like West coast, West coast type of person, you know, growing up, you know, Snoop, you know, the dog pound, just really heavy, heavy West coast. DJ quick is uh, another like influence uh, for me. And then going to the East coast again, that, that was really, that helped me broaden. Like you mentioned, just on the East coast, you got so many um, different, uh, you know, people from everywhere, from all all walks of life. So I was introduced to to more, you know, like you know, uh, reggae music, just just the island, West Indian music in general. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with go 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 music. Was some I was introduced being in the D.C. area and just a lot of heavy down south rap, of course, and um, and then just you know, just kind of being somewhere different. I just always just learn and 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 gravitated towards all genres of music and um and yeah and then and like you said just hear me how I just dig into the crate for that lab music man it just come from just just a passion of music and just like you know just loving it all really so yeah. that's what's up man that's what's up I, I gotta say man West Coast West Coast um I actually my favorite rapper to this day is Tupac and I'm not even from the West Coast man uh one of my favorite lines that he say, I feel like with Tupac compared to Biggie, Tupac definitely for sure, I could relate more to him because he grew up without a father. Mm -hmm. And I feel a lot of young men, especially our age or younger, never had that father. And they looking right. for the streets. You feel me? Right. So one of my favorite lines of all times is, um, he passed away and I didn't cry because my anger wouldn't let me feel for a stranger. <laughs> You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. <laughs> that that line hits me, bro. I was yeah. like, yeah, that's true, man. That's nah, Pac, Pac, Pac was different, man. Pac was different. Pac was different. So I definitely feel you on that. Right? He was like revolutionist. Um, He was an uh, activist for black and brown. Mm -hmm. He definitely looked out for woman empowerment. So he, he did a lot of stuff ahead of, ahead of his generation, I feel. You feel me? Yeah. So that's what's up, bro. That's what's up. Um, so real quick, man, I, I want to ask you something. So what was your how, how would I put this in words, man? Like, so I know that you actually have a studio that you now are like you were telling me about it. So it's a tell us more about your studio where people can do your their own podcast, they can do their own uh if they want to do a music video there. Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, yeah. So um just just opened it up uh in Vegas. Um so if you go if you go on Instagram, it's uh do underscore you underscore want underscore a underscore podcast. So do you want a podcast? Um yeah, so we, we're opening it up. Um you can you can come and um you know rent rent out time and space to to record your podcast. Podcasts are huge right now. It's a good way to to a good outlet to get out your information, um, very competitive, affordable prices for the average person. Um, so yeah, if you can just go ahead, go on, on IG and look that up, uh, it'll have all the details, but yeah, but we just, I just wanted to create a space, man. And, um, for people to, you know, have somewhere to go and, and record, um, especially, you know, a lot of people are doing podcasts from homes and things like that, but we all know, um, you know, presentation is everything, right? So if you can go somewhere and, and have a space where you could get it right, make it making it look legit and uh, for an affordable price, you know why why not do it? So maybe we might we might even have to do a a live a live session for outlet to reality from the from the studio man and just you know set it up or something. That'd be pretty dope. But yeah, but definitely definitely check that out. 
Oh, I'll be down, man. I'll, I'll bring a couple beers, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just hang out. Yeah. Yep. Chop it you up, can film man. It. You can film it. You know, you, you can get up to five five people um, in one studio and just rock out. Um, like I said, you can record your session. We got the green screen. Um, everything, man. There's packages that you can design that, that fits you and again, and it won't break your pocket. So that's really the main thing. So to get people out there um, and do it, you know, and just for example, like the Twitch and all that stuff, if you're a DJ and you want to come set up and for an hour and use the green screen to go live on your Twitch. I mean, it's, it's so many, so many ways you can utilize it and, you know, get yourself set up. So that's, that's kind of what we're trying to do with that. That's what's up, man. And what's the name of your, your, your spot? Like, um, yeah. So, so, uh, trilogy, so the trilogy, uh, studios. Okay. Yep. Yep. Cool. That's what's up, man. See, look at that, man. We, we make a move black and Brown, man. We moving up, man. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's amazing because, I hear a lot of people, young people that I've worked with or people I know, they're trying to find a spot to actually do their podcast. So now that I got you and you just share some interesting news, they're going to be so happy, man, because that's what they need. You know, they need a spot to to feel like, oh, man, this looks now professional. You feel me? Right. Exactly. Exactly. That's what's up, man. That's what's up, man. And a quick thing, man, I want to ask you something. So, you know, being a DJ, too. Um, it's a lot of, I ain't gonna lie, it's a lot of time consuming too, man. You know what I'm saying? But, but what, what would you say, um, that inspires you right now? Like to be a DJ right now? Yeah. Um, I think, I think for me, it's just, I just get a, I get, uh, a rush on just every time, every time I do it. Just, just seeing the crowd reaction, you know, that's like the biggest thing for me. Like if, if I, if I get that reaction out of a crowd and just, just drop that bomb and everybody just, oh, that give me chills, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, I man. Yeah, I love that. Just hearing that when that that banger drop and everybody just, oh, you know, and it just take you back and. And, you know, put you like you mentioned, it just put you in that space, you know, that when you first heard it are, you know, for me, like a lot of songs, whenever I hear it, either take me back anywhere from, you know, my mom's cleaning up in the crib. Right. And, and hearing 90s R&B um, are, you know, just, you know, when I was, you know, in middle school, you know, you know, uh, back in it, you know, grinding on chicks to uh, juvenile back that ass up or, you know, it just it just take you back to that spot, you know, and and it's funny because and the reason why I appreciate it so much, because I mean, you know, like. People don't party like that no more, man. You know, like parties ain't a thing. You you, you can't walk into a spot and, and everybody just on a dance floor, just just getting it. Everybody's just either standing around or are occupied by something else, you know? And so as a DJ, you know, it's just, that that's, that's just very like insp inspirational for me to be able to, to still bring people together and, and still get their attention. Like, like, yo, let's, let's, let's have some fun, you know? No, I like that. I like that. Especially man. Like I, I was listening to some old school. I ain't gonna lie. I, you know, I don't know how, but my phone, you know, with Spotify, it just plays like random music when you have like a mixed playlist. Right. And, and yesterday, you're not going to believe it. R. Kelly popped up in my, my music box. And I ain't gonna lie, man. You know, musically, he is still the king of R&B. Ain't nobody can say no. You know, you got the step 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 yeah. step oh. running, running. <laughs> yeah uh, you know what i'm saying and he's from right. chicago and trap in the closet you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. that's that's amazing man and and honestly man like it, it's crazy how really music does have an effect on people depending on their mood like if they're sad they're gonna listen to sad music if they're happy, they're going to listen to something upbeat. You feel what I'm saying? And it, it's just crazy. Like, I don't know, man. Music is really something like really important to me. And I pretty much use it for everything. When I'm cooking, I'll be like, you know, bounce it, bring it back. Hey, bounce it, bring it back. Right, right. <laughs> sure. 
And, and you know what? I agree with you, man, 100 percent. When you go to a party and back in our days, right, um, DJ um, B. Lou, real quick. How old are you, brother? So I'm 35. No way. Brother, yes, brother, I thought you were 24. <laughs> brother, I thought nope. you were 24. You look so young. Nah, because man. I'm old. I, dang, man. No, no, <laughs> man. <laughs> you, you got me right there because uh, when I was young, right, when I was in high school, I went to parties, right? We used to call it when a girl grinds on you, we used to call it juking. Okay. And so when we got older and I got to, I think, college, um, now it became twerking. Yep. Right. But before juking, if I'm not mistaken, bro, I, I mean, I learned it from a movie. I don't know if I was right, but there was a movie I saw back in the days where a girl was jumping. It was juking on the dude and he was like, oh, that girl know how to drop it like it's hot. And so I don't know what they used to <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I don't know what they used to call him back in your turn. What would you remember back in the days? Now, we just it was just. Just grinding, you know. Oh, for real? <laughs> yeah, just grinding. It, it, wow, man. That, that was the same. That was the saying then. Just grinding, you know. Everybody had a song called "Grinding." That's Bump true. and grind, you know. Like you, you brought up Kels. He had a song "Bump and Grind," you know. Uh, but yeah, it was just it was just grinding before, and then before that, they you know it used to be they call it freaking. It was the freak. Oh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> If you ever go back, I know, like I said, I know I'm dating myself, but if you ever go back and watch like House Party or any of like those movies, that's what they was calling it back there, the, you know, the freak. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, man. No, for real, like how how a word has evolved, you know what I'm yep, saying? Yep. It's the yep. same thing, but it's just it, it evolving. I think it's kind of crazy, man. I'm going to be honest, man. There's some people, they make money just to twerk. Like they mm, teach oh, yeah. tutorials. And they good at it, though. It's, yeah. it's a it's a uh it's a skill for sure <laughs> it's a skill set because I'll, I'll be seeing videos and i'll be like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> oh man like for me man if a girl does it i'll be like man she hit the right spot I'll be like, you know what i'm saying i'll be like yeah. oh step oh step you know what i'm saying but, yeah but twerking a little too much movement for me i like oh, yeah. i want you know like nice slow grind you know Okay, all that's right. that's where it can be too. Sometimes <laughs> can be a little too much work. Oh yeah, especially especially if the beat go right, right. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> you, you know what's my technique, man? I ain't gonna lie. One of my best techniques is I make sure the girl comes like I, I pull her back and like I'm all the way against the wall so she can't make me fall. You feel what I'm right. saying? No, that was about, that's what I was about to say. My technique is just, I'm about to grab the shit out of her waist so she can't even move. Like, I'm I'm pulling that in. I ain't about to be trying to keep up with, with the movements. <laughs> oh, man, for real. And sometimes I pull their hair, man. They kind of like it. Like, oh, my uh, gosh. And I ain't never did that on the dance floor. No? Nah? no, nah, I ain't never pulled no hair. But man, I pulled one girl hair. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, uh. Places I'll be that it might come out. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh man, you funny, bro. You killing me over. You know? <laughs> yeah, some of the spots I, I hide out at, they that might, you know, that might be all bad. Oh man, I, I don't blame you, bro. I don't blame you. I, you know what? I know there's two things, man. I could be wrong, but honestly, I think if a girl knows how to grind or, or twerk. My theory is she likes to get freaky in bed. That's my first theory. Mm -hmm. Second, if I see a girl that likes tattoos, that she has like a bunch of tattoos, right away I think she she likes pain. And if she likes pain, you know she likes it rough in bed. That's how I see it. That's my theory. And I honestly, so far, my theory has not been proven wrong from the relationships I've been. I think it's been true, man, honestly, because I don't know. Some people, they like that feeling of that, you know, that needle, you know, feeling that. And it hurts, you know, when you, you depending where you get it. So I'm like, man, right away, I, when I yep. see a girl, I'm like, okay, she like pain. I think she likes me. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but it's crazy, man. It's crazy stuff, fam. Now, now, real quick, uh, DJ 
Bilu, real quick, what is uh, any upcoming projects you have that's coming up this year? Yeah, so man, I've been I've been sitting on something for a while. Uh, actually, need to make sure you uh, you get that on IG. But um, so you know, I kind of gave you my background a little bit, but um, I do have a, a alter a alter ego that I call that I have called uh, DKTF. So it's uh, it's don't kill the fun. And that's my that's my uh, production production alter ego. So I'm I'm working on a project. It's pretty much done, man. I've just been sitting on it since quarantine. I need to just release it, but um, it's called Mew Music, man. And um, and I'm dropping it. Uh, it's 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 more heavy on the like like EDM trap side. Uh, production. It's it's all instrumental based. Uh, it's gonna be like a five six track EP. Um, and again, it's uh. You know, my alter ego is don't kill the fun, man. It's just like that's that's kind of my mindset, you know, and whenever whenever I do this, man. And um, again, you could fi- you could find me on IG with that as uh, is DKTF, the music with a K. So M-U-S-I-K, uh, DKTF music again with a K at the end. And um, yeah, that's I got a, a IG page. You know, just keep. Keep uh, you posted on on the project and um and all that stuff, man. And um yeah, I'm excited about it. You know, it's just one of those things where uh, I haven't dropped the project, and it's like, you know, I, I just been sitting on it. Like I want it to be right. You know, it, it's never it never feel right to just let it go out in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been like, man, yeah, it's been like a year probably almost. Um, and so hopefully I'm I'm gonna just get the courage, man, and just just drop it. But um. But yeah, but definitely follow that page and um and check that out. And uh, you know, I got some SoundCloud stuff on there as well. Uh, again, that's more of the the music production side, you know, of DJ B. Lou. So again, man, don't kill the fun, man. That's that's my motto. That's what's up, man. And, and what <laughs> what what made you like um take take long? Like what, um, what stopped you? What stopped you in a way? Yeah, just you know. Again, it's just one of those things where you just like you kind of you kind of too hard on yourself or you just feel like it ain't there. But sometimes you just got to let it go and just just see what happens, you know, and just like like I said. And then and also with just production, it's like when you always doing stuff, you you know, you, again, it's called your mute, your mood changes. Right. Yeah. So one week I'm like, man, I'm on this this heavy bass trap and then the next I might be in my feelings and I want more chord progressions and softer you know just a, a more slow tempo vibe like it just, it just depends man I might have just went to the gym and went hard now I want want that shit to be just you know just got my heartbeat you know my heart rate up so yeah I, I and I really just need to bring some people in man and just listen and um and then just let them decide, because like I said, I'll never make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, but, it, it, but it's ready, man. It's ready. So so I'm, I'm excited, man, to finally finally get it done and do it right. And so hopefully maybe when I release it, to get back on the pod, man, and, and, and do something. So for sure. Yeah. That'll be what's up, brother. I, 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 you know, I, I agree, man. And I, I think, too, man, you know, also you should also like promote like a little sneak peek. Uh, when it comes out, remember I was yes, telling you you should put on TikTok. Put a yeah, little... I got yeah, I gotta get on. I gotta get on the TikTok this week, man. Right, stop playing. Yeah, that's your I got goal, some man. visuals too. I, I did drop some visuals last summer for a couple couple other joints, and um, I might just have to go back to those and you know and just re and just kind of you know do it again, man. You know, just kind of keep persistent at it, you know. So yeah. so yeah. Oh, that's what's up, fam. I, I appreciate that. And and real quick, man, what is so for anybody that wants to be a DJ, right? At this moment, that are um that need some advice, what would you give? Like if you were to go back in time, right? What would t- what would you tell yourself things that you should know as a DJ that will help you, you know, to be like this top? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, one thing I, I think one thing I struggled with early was just like um, like music knowledge. Um, so 
And what I mean, like, like I told you, like growing up on the West Coast, like I was like really in a box when it came to like certain music, you know, I didn't know a lot of stuff. But and I, I had I had challenges early as a DJ um, because I'll do certain events or gigs, you know, anything from corporates to weddings to whatever the case may be um, of not really having a knowledge of music, but getting that experience, I gained it. Right. And um and so I think really if, if that's something you want to do, like be be open to all, all, all types of music, um, you know, get to the point where, you know, like for me, like people always laugh at me when I DJ or, or be surprised. Like I don't like I don't use headphones when I DJ. Right. But, you know, when, when you think of a DJ, you think of like somebody who like, you know, they <laughs> lean it to the side, you know, like that's that's just like, you know, that's what you think. Right. People be like, you don't you like you don't use headphones. I'm like. Like nah, it's just like, like I like I and I, I never create. I don't create playlists when I DJ. I never I never have a playlist. Anytime you see me spinning, I'm just I'm off the top because, you know, um, I, I DJ off off feeling. Like I'm I, like I could be in the song and it's thirty seconds left and I don't even know what I'm about to play, you know. Oh. And it's just like holy shit. I'm like fuck. Where am I go? Where am I go? <laughs> what I'm gonna play next, and then, and I just, I just love that freedom to DJ because I feel, I feel it, you know. And when I just, when, when my, when my body or my mind just tell me what I'm gonna go to next, just based off like what I'm already playing or like with, with the vibe, with the crowd is like, like I don't put myself in that box, and I just, I, I always freestyle my sets. I never pre, I never make a playlist ever. Wow, because it's, it's go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna pick at your brand a little bit. So, what what makes it bad if you do a playlist? It's it's not. I don't think it's bad. I mean, I think it's it's for every. You know, everybody's different. But again, for me, it's all about just the feeling, the vibe. If I got a playlist, I already know. I already know what I'm gonna play less. But like, okay, what if that last joint didn't hit like I thought it was gonna hit, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm already got the other song on deck and I drop that and I'm just digging myself in a hole. But if I'm just, just going and just like, okay, like I'm, I'm feeling it. And then I don't know, just for me, when, when that happens, like stuff just click and just pop up and it's just like, and then I think about songs that I didn't even remember. Like, Oh, let me, let me, let me see if I got that. And, you know, take it, you know, it's just like, I don't know, just pre pre doing it, just kind of, kind of, you know, just throws, throws it off a little bit but but yeah so definitely the answer your question just like really really get get familiar with all types of music all eras um because you never know what your crowd gonna be especially if you're playing in public places especially if you put like it could be a, a, a range from you know 25 to 50 you want everybody to feel like they belong you know yeah you know, you want to, you want everybody to feel like they belong in the spotlight. You don't want the old people feeling like, oh, this is too young. And you don't want the young people to. So you just got to know those joints, man. Like it, there's certain there's certain songs that. You could be one to a hundred and you're going to feel it, you know, there's right. just certain there's just certain songs like. <laughs> um, but yeah, but definitely. And then just, you know, just like find just find you. Um one thing that about me as a DJ, like I'm not the best technical DJ, you know, like they're going to, they're going to be some DJs that are better than me in the sense of like, they're going to get up there and Ricky Ricky and all that, you know, but they're not going to outsong me. Like, ain't no, like, like, like song for song. Nah. And, and I found my lane though. I don't, I don't want to be that guy, you know? Yeah, yeah. I know that like, I don't want to be like, I don't want to battle you. Like, get out of here. Like, like I'm trying, like I said, like I'm trying to make sure the fun goes on, you know, like that's, that's my thing. Like that, that's my, and I found that within myself. Like when I first started, I thought I had to be that guy, like in the room struggling, like, Fuck, I can't, I can't do this. Like, this is hard. And I'm like, nobody, 80, 90% of the people in the club don't care. They just want that music to keep going and you just got to play the right songs, you know? As long as you, as long as you got that down, you know what songs to play. 
you good. So just really, really do that. But then again, find your lane. If if you are skilled and you do that, like make that work for you. If not, you know, find what works. Every DJ is different. Like don't, you know, don't set your 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 bar to other people. You know, find find what what work. And that's what anything, you know, find find what you know. Run your own race. You know, that's that's the thing. Like, you know, find what works best for you and 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 capitalize on that and 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 master that. That's that's the main thing. And like I said, that's what anything you do, anything. I like that. I like that. Now, another question I want to pick up your brain because this is. Everybody wants to ask about this. Uh, what annoys you when people go up to you and they ask for a song? What's the, what's the big <laughs> thing that they that you got to tell me? Because I know you got stories. So, uh, so what 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 is the biggest thing that annoys you? Hundred percent, brother. You got to tell. You got to be um, honest. You got to be honest. You know what? To to be <laughs> honest, so it's not really the request as much, but I've have I. I, I have been in situations like I do a lot of corporate stuff in the casinos and, and stuff like that, like big, big, big uh, venues and um, conferences, whatever. Like sometimes I'm like, why? I, I, sometimes I'm blown. I'm blown away. Like people like you really wasted money to have me here to do this. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but hey, you know, bring the bag. But 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 music is everything. Right. You can't. You gotta set the mood, but um, but not not as much as requests. But I do get people when I'm in like those situations, and I remember specifically at at Mandalay Bay, I was playing a a, con- a convention, and just just is kind of give you a feel of like some of the weird kind of events that I do. This was a tile a tile and gravel convention, so just put that out there. <laughs> so why is a DJ? At a tile and gravel convention, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's that's the first question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so this guy comes up to me. I'm rocking like outside the, the registration like hall. Like they got me just setting the vibe, right? You know, people coming seven in the morning, you know, limping in, and you know, I'm I'm there to just set the mood, you know, for the day. Dude come, he has the nerves to come up to me and say, oh. Yeah, it must be nice to just uh, play music for a living. I'm like, oh, is, so is that easy, huh? You just <laughs> and so why why I bring that up is that that bothers me a lot. Uh, and it's frustrating because people think you like literally you just playing music like it's that easy, you know? Why people you? make it seem like it's just like oh, you could just you just pull up some songs and just just go in. And it's not, it's not, man. And so, so that that's that's one thing that 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 bothers me more than any song request or whatever. Just like when people try to devalue um, the skill that it takes to be a DJ. Wow. Um, yeah, people come at you, man. Like you just up there, just like pressing buttons, and and it's just like, how do you who's who, who, who's thinking of the songs to play? You know. How do you how do you think I know what songs to play? How do you, you it's it's a lot way more that goes into it. Yeah. You know? Right. And so <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you know, getting your iPod and hooking it up to the ox cord. Yeah, and, and, and it's it. rocking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so so um that's that's more again, like it kind of straight straight away, but I think that's more important. I think that that's the more frustrating thing that, that bothers me the most. The, the people that really look at you like you just up there, just just pressing buttons. Wow, you know, <laughs> yeah, dude, that's crazy, man. That's a crazy <laughs> guy right there, man. I ain't gonna lie. Now, one more, one more. I, I I need to know the answer. This is another one that that happens to a lot with a lot of DJs. So you're wrapping up, okay? I'm gonna put you in the scenario. You're wrapping up. You're about to pack your stuff, and you get some people come up and say, "Hey, can you play me one more song?" I really want it. That sound like you, bro. You nah, know, what I'm <laughs> <laughs> you're funny. You're funny. <laughs> you got me with the right hook, but nah, man. Nah, I, nah, always, nah. I always leave like 15 minutes, 20 minutes before you wrap up. I don't know if you know that, man. I don't be doing that to you. But, <laughs> nah. but I know some girls, right? If I'm not mistaken, you get a lot of girls or guys that will tell you right when you're wrapping up. 
can you play one more song? I'm for from sure. out of town. I'm out. I'm from out of town. Like I care. <laughs> like I care, right? So please yeah. tell me, brother. Does that like come on, man? You gotta be real. Like, does that bother you when they they see you packing up? And they still want. It depends on. It depends how how drunk I am and what the crowd looking like and who asking me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Like all, it's all, all those factors, right? Like all those factors. If, if she if she bad and she asking, and when I'm done, I might, you know, might want to holler later. Yeah, I might. Yeah, I'll, I'll throw that thing on there. <laughs> you know, um, and and no, nah, but really, in all seriousness, no. Um, it it depends. Like that 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 happens all the time, but um, it just depends on like what the song is. You know, really, how I'm feeling. If I got somewhere else to be, but it, it, it don't it don't bother me. You know, especially if they they're polite about it. Um, I'll, I'll throw it in there. But if I'm already shut down, I ain't packing back. I mean, I ain't turning nothing back on. But yeah, but if I'm still up and it's like the last song still going, and they like, hey, can you? I'll I'll throw it in if if the if the vibe if the song is like in that in the right vibe. You know. Oh, okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. It's just, yeah. So, but it's a. Yeah, it, that's a hard. That's a hard. Like, there's no one answer for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, I got some good scenarios, man, because I know I know you face a lot of things, man. As a DJ, you feel what I'm saying? For sure. So, uh, I'm, yeah. And, and I appreciate your honesty because it, it means a lot, man. You know what I'm saying? And these are things that you know people that are going to be startups who are DJ for the young folks, right? Who are asking these questions, they can be prepared right when they get into the the field and they're going to perform they got to be ready what to expect you know what i'm yeah. saying just, just to add to you brought that up um and i'll just share a story when like one of my first gigs right um you know and we talked a little bit earlier about just being you know professional and stuff like that um you know if you if there's something you want to go to and with, again with anything you do you know do it make sure you do it right um and I say that because I, when I first, I first got a gig and this was like when Craigslist was a thing, you know, I was just out there fishing, like, oh, I'm going to see. And somebody called me like, Hey, I need a DJ. Whoop -de -whoop. I think they paid me like a hundred bucks or something. And I was like, Oh, let's go. And I wasn't, I thought I was ready, but I wasn't, um, in the sense I wasn't professional and the reason why I say that, you know, I went out there, I had one, I owned one speaker. Oh so I had to, I had to legit go, go get it, go borrow. I borrowed the second speaker from a friend. So I had mismatch speakers and then I also was using the, the, uh, the like intro 14 day version of the, this Serato DJ software. So <laughs> I was using the free, I had free DJ software. My music wasn't up to really like my catalog wasn't really where, where it should have been. And I had mismatch, mismatch uh, speakers. So again, if, if there's some, if it's some, anything that you want to go into, you know, make sure you do it right. How, you know, be professional when you go to these gigs. And, and I say that because at my gig, my, my uh, laptop shut down like three times on in the middle because I had the trial and we in the middle of to the windows to the my shit just crashed. <laughs> <laughs> so because I didn't know, I'm like, oh, I got this free trial. And, you know, like, you know, sometimes when you're on these free trials, they get you, it's like time limit. And so the shit just kept crashing and crashing. I'll get to a certain amount of songs crash the crash so so people out there get get the real shit invest in yourself right that's my point invest in yourself get the real shit get the real software get the equipment whatever it is do it right don't half-ass do it because you don't get half-ass results and first impression is everything right you might not get a second chance or a second gig if you if you don't do it right the first time so not saying you got to feel 100% confident to go out there and book because that's how you practice. You just got to get out there, right, and do it because it's different doing it in the crib versus doing it in front of people 
where you playing the song and ain't nobody moving. Everybody just is crickets. And you're like, shit, why ain't nobody dancing? Like, what? whoa. whoa. <laughs> And then now your heart racing because you like you don't even know what to play next because you're just in your mind you thought your set was it, and that and that goes back to why I don't why I don't play do a preset because if it don't work you know what what I'll do <laughs> oh for real but yeah but yeah invest in yourself that's the point of that invest if it's something you want to do invest in yourself and and do it right you know take your time and do it right because um, it matters for sure. I like that, bro. Thank you, man. Thank you for the the wisdom, man. Uh, real quick, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. This is the outlet to reality. The whole this podcast in Vegas and Chicago every Tuesday. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Cha-ching! And, you know, we're always going to be here, guys. Don't forget to follow me on YouTube, Spotify, the outlet to reality, my TikTok at Yakov28. And my Snapchat, take one, pass it. And DJ B. Lou, where can our fans find you? Yes, sir. So IG, DJ underscore B L E W. And also IG, D K T F music, M U S I K. Um, yeah, check both of those out, man. Um, see where I'm spinning at. Uh, give me a follow. And yeah, so again, appreciate you, brother. Oh, yeah. Peace.